Glitter lied to me. It's not my friend. So, welcome everybody to another day of Guess the Weather. If you don't know, um, I have a whole new setup. I got a new camera, stand, got new software, the whole nine yards, having fun, and I've been sitting out my window, through my makeup. I'm aware I look like Mimi from Drew Carey, and that's fine. We'll get to that later. But the weather's changed about five times in the last hour and a half or so that I've been here. It, it snowed, it rained, it was cloudy, you know, it's, there's sunshine. It's in their times, can we say? So today we are going to talk about mental illness and how to maintain it, how to stay good. You, you've worked hard, you get to a point where life is good, you know, and you want to stay there. There are certain things that you have to do. The first one that a lot of people hate doing, and not, nothing I can say about it, it's the truth. Take your medication that you're prescribed. So don't listen to that propaganda about over-prescribing stuff that you read on the internet. Most of it comes from the United States. Here in Canada, doctors don't get paid for prescriptions. They, they do get, you know, samples and try to hand it out or whatnot, but they don't make a profit unless you're a methadone doctor, but that's a whole other story. However, if you do think that the medication that you are being given for your mental illness doesn't suit you or is too strong or not the right one, nothing stops you from getting a second opinion. And that second opinion might take a very, very long time, as in sitting at the ER for about 16 hours. Um, anything that's to do with mental illness, the wait is about that long because you're not dying. You're, you're not a priority. I know you feel like it at the time, but the person who came in with, you know, a heart attack or a broken arm or a cut head, they're going to go first. But they will see you. And there will be a psychiatrist that will come down and evaluate things and <clears throat> all that kind of whatnot. So if you do really think that the things that you're on, you shouldn't be, you know, and your doctor doesn't want to talk about it, you can get a second opinion. There's nothing wrong with that at all. However... Mostly, they prescribe it for a reason. Second thing is eating healthy. Um, I know that that sounds scary, eating healthy. Mostly if you're like me and you're on a budget. It's, it's, it's really hard because fresh food and things that are good for you are expensive. And the stuff that's cheap is the stuff you shouldn't be eating. And I'm not saying like totally overhaul your diet. Just add some things in there. Fresh fruit and fresh vegetables are, or even like juice that comes from like actual fruit, like orange juice or, you know, not the frozen stuff that I happen to adore, but you know, real juice. It has vitamins and nutrients that you need because making a very long story short, they now have a correlation, which means they're combined with the bacteria that's in your stomach, like in your gut, where you digest your food, does have an impact on how your brain functions. It has an impact on your mood. So if your digestive stuff isn't happening very well, it most probably can affect how you feel mentally. Which is, So it doesn't have to be a perfectly you know, healthy thing, as long as it's balanced. If you're the type of person that was like me a long time ago, like before everything went bad, I lived off nothing but Domino's. That's not good. You can still have Domino's pizza. Not a problem. Just, you know, throw an apple or two in there once in a while or, or something. You know, just make an active effort on trying to be a little bit more healthy. Um, but if you really want to know, like, when you're at the grocery store, is this food that I'm buying healthy? Because, you know... Things come in a box and a can these days. My rule of thumb is, can I pronounce the ingredients? If I can pronounce all the ingredients, then most probably they're real ingredients and not a bunch of chemicals. 
In my case, I do have to avoid chemicals and preservatives, but that's not everybody else's case. But again, if you want to go that far, yeah. If you can pronounce the ingredients, chances are that it's good. Go for it. So the third thing is having a good support system. So a support system can be a lot of things. So, you know, your therapist, it can be like, you know, a social worker, a psychiatrist, or, or someone that you see on the regular to talk about how you feel, how you're going, and update, all that kind of whatnot. And then there's also, you know, friends and family. And I've recently discovered, which has made a big difference in my life, that you don't need to get everything that you want out of a support system out of one particular person. So, I do have to apologize to my mom, like, heartfelt. For the longest time, I saw her as my sole support. And I pretty much burned her out. I mean, I, I know I called her a bazillion times a day. And I'm sorry you took me this long to figure it out, but that's how life is, you know. People can sit here and I can tell you stuff and me and preach and the doctors and whatever. But a lot of the things, you just got to figure it out on your own to be able to, you know, really understand it and then be able to make a change in your life. So now I get it. I mean, not that I, I'm not saying I don't talk to my mother at all. Um, I talk to her a lot and she's still very much of a help. But I also have, you know, my best friend, Mel. So there's some things that I need for support that Mel can provide me that I don't have to bother my mother for. So I'm splitting things up and I have a few other people depending on what the thing is that I will talk to. So I spread it out. But to quote Mel, it's quality, not quantity. You don't need to have five million friends. You know, five is too much for me. I don't know how much you want. But keep your circle small, keep your circle true. People that, you know, will hold you accountable to, to things that you're doing, what you're saying, that will be honest with you, and that will give you time. If you call them and you're like, look, I need to talk because things aren't going well, even if they're busy, they will, if they can at least say, look, I'm really busy right now, but I'll call you back in half an hour or something of the sort, be thankful. Keep those people, okay? Just because they're not answering the second you want them to answer, which is ironic because, yes, it's something I've learned. As long as they get back to you and say, I will get back to you, and they do, then be happy because nothing's perfect. You're not the center of the world. You know. So my next point that I want to say is that there is no shame in asking for help. A lot of people have a hard time asking for help. And I get it. And it's because most of the time when, you know, I'm going to say we as in people with mental health issues, but when it comes to mental health, like if you want to add anxiety and depression in there, that pretty much encompasses everybody. Because everybody at one point in time in their lives has had, you know, something happen to them. So unfortunately here in New Brunswick with the health system being what it is, most of the time when someone reaches out for help, they get the door slammed in their face. Or... They get told that they're on a waiting list. And that waiting list is like two years long. So a lot of people just gave up trying to ask for help. I mean, it's, it's there. You, you, but it's hard to get to, and I understand. But it still doesn't mean that you can't ask. It doesn't mean that people out there don't care. Again, back to the support system. You know, if you can't get help from the hospitals or mental health because there's a, a waiting list, you know. A lot of people out there, you might not be aware of that, but a lot of the people out there, mostly if you work in a call center, because this is Moncton and there's a bunch of call centers, they usually have an employee thing where you can talk to about health issues. They usually have something through work that you can go talk to someone. It, it only might give you like 10 sessions or whatnot, but I mean... Ten sessions is better than nothing. Uh, you do have to go usually through human resources of your work to get there. And sometimes it's maybe a little bit embarrassing because unfortunately some employers will hold that against you. 
and that is illegal. Now, if that actually does happen, so through your work, you try to reach out for help because of some kind of mental health crisis or help or whatever you need, and you either get refused or your job gets changed or, you know, lowered or whatnot, they can't do that. That is against your human rights. And if it ever happens to you, I suggest that you call the Human Rights for New Brunswick. Um, they're located in Fredericton. And you can place a complaint and they will help you out with the, the steps to be done. I'm just saying this because I've gone through them. It's not necessarily painful. It just takes some of your own time to do it. You don't need a lawyer. It's free. Uh, but yeah, stand up for yourself. That's uh, another part of I am doing now. But that's like um, after maintenance. Like once you're really established, you got to learn to stand up for yourself. And I'm doing that now. And the world thinks that um, I don't deserve to breathe the air that they do because I have an opinion. And I'm also asking for help, yeah. So, I understand how it's hard to ask for help. Because I have, and the things that was told to me on Facebook for asking for help were, again, we're not even going to go there because it, it was horrible. So, don't ask for help on Facebook. That that's, that's not the place for it. I mean, it's a great resource, and if people, you know, weren't all jerks, you could get great answers, but, you know, they're not. Uh, if you do wonder how to get some help or whatnot, feel free to message this page or me at any time. I'm usually around. I'll, I'll answer. The only times I don't answer is when I'm at work because I'm not allowed to have my phone. Other than that, it's around. And uh, I'm not a therapist. I don't know all the answers. But I can help you find how to find the answers or, or help get help. That is part of why I'm here and, and what I want to do with this. So yes, ask for help. Don't be afraid. If people say bad things to you because you ask for help, well, guess what? They have a problem. And I know it, it's like a cliche. The problem isn't actually th like them. The problem is that they are most probably, in my opinion, in my experience in life, also not okay with something in their lives. They also need help and they don't want to ask for help for whatever their reasons are. I can't say the word. They are mirroring it back on you. There's another word for this, but I just can't think of it because it's called ADHD and sometimes the words that I'm trying to say aren't the words that come out of my mouth or in my brain. It happens. So the next parts that I'm going to touch on to maintain your mental health to, to be happy, to be able to deal with negativity because it's all over and it's everywhere. They all have to do with you. Making yourself happy. You have to put yourself first. You, have, you can learn to say no. I know that's a hard thing to do sometimes when it's family. You know, everybody always wants a favor. Maybe somebody always wants to drive. If you have that one friend that only calls you when they want to drive somewhere... Say no, because I know what that feels like because once upon a time I had a car and I did drive. I don't anymore because I don't want to. Uh, anyway, but it really, f you feel used and you feel, it makes you upset even though you want to try to pretend it's not. And even if you don't have any friends and you're like, they're the only friend I have, don't put yourself there. You know, believe in yourself, love yourself enough to say no. If they want you to go to an outing with the friends or a family thing and you're too tired because you worked all week, say no. And if they don't like that, too bad. It's your health. Because if something happens that you just keep going and keep going and then you just crash and burn, are they going to be there to pay your bills, pick up the pieces? Probably not. If they are, however, going to be there to pick up the pieces, then maybe you should make an exception and say yes to them. But then again, if they would be there to pick up the pieces, they would be the type of person to understand if you said, no, I'm too tired. But learn to say no. The other thing is your environment. Make it what you want it to be. This is my apartment. I'm trying to get the subsidized for this place working. And 
Some people aren't very happy about it, but you know, we're working on it whether it happens or not, I, I don't know. Either way, I'm fortunate enough that I can still pay the bills difficultly, but you know, budget, it's called budgeting properly. It's, it's doable. But I've arranged this place the way I want it. So this is my little piece of heaven in my corner. It's got all my makeup. Yeah, I have a lot. I know. I'm definitely done buying, but that's not my point. And it looks out the window. And I call it my corner because I've got my desk there. And my computer behind it. So, you know, YouTube on that side. And then multitasking. It's not just um, makeup. I, I do my nails as well. My stuff's hiding underneath. But there's my book. And that's the book where I organize my budget, my thoughts. Everything goes in there. And I actually keep them all after I'm done writing through them. You know, sunlight when there is sunshine is very important. And that's my little corner where my happiness happens. There is no wrong way to arrange your space. You can hear about all that feng shui or whatever zen. Look, organize your space, whether if you have a, you're renting a room from someone or you have your own apartment or your own house or, or whatnot. Put things where you want them to be. If other people don't think they should go there, so what? It's your house. Remember when you were a kid and your mom used to tell you to clean your room? Because I used to do this all the time. Whenever my mom made me clean my room, I couldn't find anything for like two weeks. It's an organized mess. It's okay. When it was messy... I knew where things were. And then when I cleaned it and I put them away, I couldn't remember where I put them. So put things in your house where you want them to be. Because it's your house. You're the one looking at it. I mean, if you have a partner and children, you know, they might have to be consulted. But then again, stand up for yourself and tell them, look, it's important for me, for whatever your reason would be, to have the couch right there. Might sound unorthodox to them and to everybody else. But if it makes sense to you, do it. The reason why? Because if something makes sense to you and you organize things the way you want them to be, it makes you be able to relax more because you're not seeing things out of place. Now, I know this comes from a place of OCD. and not every It comes from a place of OCD, I know. But everybody has a little touch of OCD, you know. It's it's considered a mental illness and is considered a problem when it interferes with your everyday activities. Like me having to reorganize things like 10 times and sometimes I'm late for appointments and stuff because I just have to put things away the right way. But, you know, that's me. That's not everybody else. But when you have things organized and they're in the way that you want them, your mind doesn't think about all those things out of place. It doesn't trigger those things in your mind that then makes you think about the bad things that happen at work. When your space is organized, when you're comfortable where it's what you want, even if it's painting your wall orange. And you also need to take the time to relax and decompress. Now, I know you've heard this from like, you know, Probably every single commercial Oprah, Dr. Oz show is out there. But it's true. And decompressing doesn't or relaxing or whatever. Doesn't mean like meditating or whatever. I mean, it, it can't. If that's what you're into, go for it. I personally go bonkers. But, you know, do whatever you want. And it can be as simple as taking a bath. If you like taking baths, take a bath. Who cares? Throw some Epsom salts in there. I just bought some that smell like eucalyptus. Five bucks for two kilograms. I'm good. 
Um, I throw them in the shower, though, so that my shower smells like eucalyptus, because, you know, I don't get the point of bass, like, sitting in my own body water, like, huh? whatever, not the point. But relax, whatever it is, it can be coloring, it can be playing an instrument, yeah, I can play instruments, more than one. Uh, the first one I learned how to play, however, was the tenor saxophone, and those are like two grand, and they're extremely loud, so is that trumpet, and I live in an apartment, so I'm not going to get played, but, you know, I still know how to do it, which is, I guess, cool. I mean, I don't know. Listening to music. Now, listening to music has more therapeutic things to it than probably anything else that I would mention here. If there's a correlation to why music as important. I actually have a post way back about when I'm talking about music. And it can be anything. Like for me, my relaxing music is Avenged Sevenfold and Five Finger Death Punch. And it doesn't matter. It can be whatever the heck it is to you. If it relaxes you, who cares what it is? There's also these things called ASMR that you can look up. There's YouTube channels for them. I do subscribe to one of them. And if it's not something that you like I mean try it out so basically it's sound I mean I know it's a YouTube channel but you're supposed to put headphones on and not watch the screen it's sound ASMR is sound of things that relax you and some of it actually works and I'm the person that like cannot stand the relaxing stuff but some of this actually works so if you want to look that up go for it uh, maybe I'll put a link to the channel that I watch underneath but whatever you want and that also includes doing your makeup. That's why I look like me from Drew Carey. Because I decided to have fun. I mean, yeah, I'm doing a video and I'm gonna be all over whatever. I don't care. I'm having fun. If, if no one likes what I look like, I don't, I, don't, I don't care. I mean, it's not like to stare at me for very long. If you don't like what I look like, then stop watching. It, I don't know. People can do whatever the heck they want, you know? But, yeah, I own a lot of makeup. I've invested in a lot of it. I am done buying because I have everything that I ever... I even... I can't even find anything interesting anymore, to tell the truth. So, that's good or bad. I don't know. <laughs> Let's just pretend it's good. But, I mean, I do my makeup every single day because I like it. It makes me happy. And... My last thing is do whatever the heck you want that makes you happy. Who cares what it is? It can be as weird as you want it to be. As long as it's not illegal or racist or hurting children, go for it. I mean, if, if it's kind of on the weird side, I mean, I'm all, I'm all cool for weird stuff. Do whatever the heck you want behind your closed doors. Just be aware that maybe some of the things that are weird, other people might not want to hear about them. Because it's not their cup of tea. So maybe be careful who you talk to about your weird things. But do them. If they make you happy, do them. Now, I did have an example about this, but somehow I erased the video and I was looking for it. So this individual listens to music while he's walking, so, you know, headphones. But he also likes to sing along with his music as loud as he can. So, he's obviously happy. Who cares? He, he walks by, I, I hear him do that about like once a week. It makes him happy. I mean, maybe it's bothersome to some people. But if it is, they have a problem. Because he's, he's not singing bad songs, by the way. Uh, most of the time, he's singing like Hank Williams and uh, Johnny Cash. So it's not like there's any bad words for the children to hear or, or whatnot. Oh, and it was Paradise City that day from Guns N' Roses. And he does know all the words, and he's, he's actually really good with the beat. And, you know, by the time I hear him and by the time I can't hear him anymore, it, it's about a couple minutes. So, I mean... He's having fun, he's enjoying his walk, and he's doing what makes him happy. 
and don't care about whatever anybody else says. So that's my point about that. Do what you want. So, so as a recap, if you want to stay okay with your mental illness, you need to take your meds. You need to have a support system. You need to have somebody to talk to about stuff because some days, days aren't easy. And anybody who looks at this Facebook page will know that I have had some days that were not easy whatsoever in the past week. But I'm here. And I'm going to be fine. I'm, I'm getting better. Like, I'm at 95% back to me. Because I have the people to talk to about it, you know? Sometimes to vent. Sometimes to give me clarity on the other side of everything. So you need somebody else there. You need to have an environment that you're happy in, that you're comfortable in, that you can just relax and throw a movie on or read a book or do whatever the heck you want. Take time for yourself. Do what you want to do. Now, I'm not saying that you can do what you want to do all the time because if I did that, I would never wear pants. And, you know, I think I'd probably go to jail if I walked outside with no pants on. But, you know... Take some time of your life, even if it's half an hour every three or four days, and just do whatever you want. So I just want to thank you all for tuning in, trying to make them short, and we'll be going continuing. And we'll be continuing with more things about mental illness. I didn't want to jump into like diagnosis right away, but I will be talking about um, the different mental health diagnoses out there, what they are, how people feel as the person who has them, how they react to things, how we can help them. And feel free to leave me comments about which ones that you think that you want to hear about. If there's anything that you have any questions or, or whatnot, because I don't really know which one to start out with yet. Thank you very much for putting up with my blue glitter and my funniness of not making sense. Well, I mean, I do make sense. I'm just upside down and twisted. But hey, that's what ADD is, so welcome to that. And have a great week, everybody.